All right, guys, it's been over a year since we installed Epic's Kraken tire inflation system in the Jeep Wrangler Eco Diesel, and I thought this would be a great follow-up video to answer a bunch of your questions that you've been leaving in the comments about the Kraken inflation system. Say hi, Fluff. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> he brought his brand, look at this beautiful Gladiator, uh, his brand new to him, Gladiator over, and we're gonna be installing a Kraken inflation system in it today, and yep, there it is. So. We've got the ARB twin air compressor, and we're gonna mount this under the seat. Let's get started with some unboxing. We'll answer your questions. I'll show you everything that comes in it. I'll show you guys just how easy this is to install. And then we'll show you guys us using it and uh, Fluff using it first time on Maximus, his, uh, what is it, Gobi Green? Gobi Green Gladiator? Uh, Gator. Gator. Green. Gator, you gotta get that right. I keep confusing Gobi and Gator. Gator's a better name. I don't like Gobi. This weather's a lot better than yesterday. It was nasty yesterday. Now we got beautiful sun. So normally Epic would ship this to you, but I did the courier service on this. Casey's courier service. Yeah. <laughs> we don't just make YouTube videos. Much appreciated. But inside our box, we have our airlines. Oh, you have the expansion kit. I, That's I, right. For the trailer. Right. Yeah, for the trailer. So Fluff has a trailer uh, that he tows behind his rig to do some off-roading. And so you can actually order the expansion kit for this. So this is an extra line single hose that you can then use to air up your two trailer tires. Because so we have just a list and a checklist and who, look at that, Landon. Landon checked this for quality control. Excellent. Nice to see, you know, that somebody checked this over before sending it to us. So this, I think, will be your air hoses in your uh, awesome adventure trail, trail gear, adventure trail gear bag. Kind of looks like an octopus. <laughs> Cracked that open, no pun intended. So they put all our installation materials. Oh, you got a nice sticker there too. Nice, nice sticker. I don't think I have a sticker. That would be your driver's slide uh, manifold. So we're gonna mount that uh, under the driver's seat bracket and awesome. then that way you can fill up your driver's side tires cool. uh, with the airline not having to drag it all around the vehicle. To, oh to so do one so. goes under each side. Kraken uses these uh, push to connect fittings and you have on here so you have the splitter so this is going to go under your driver's side seat and then when you want to air up you just push that in and now you have an airline yeah. for each of your tires. And then you can release that by pushing the little black collar in. Awesome. So these are gonna be our installation airlines because we have to put a T connector in to split the air off the passenger side and over to the driver's side. Gotcha. Which should be in here somewhere. Yes, there it is. So we've got some plugs to keep dirt and stuff out of the connectors when they're not in use. This is the T connector we're gonna fit on the ARB twin compressor to send air to both sides. And we've got a nice fuse and harness. So Epic makes a perfectly sized one so we don't have a pile of extra wires underneath uh, your seat. And then they actually include this tool to remove the button that comes with your compressor and we can put this awesome nice Kraken logoed button on there and all the zip ties we need for installing all of this and so this is going to go on your passenger side <laughs> do your best Vanna White impression there so we've already got the manifold here oh this this is a feature that we added we added they added during testing so this is our plate that we're going to mount our compressor to and it's all held down by the bolts that hold your seat down so we're going to remove some of the passenger bolts seat. Passenger, passenger seat passenger seat we're going to flip the seat back put this in put the compressor in bolt it all down and then uh, it's all held in place and we'll have our button here next to the nicely labeled on and off we can put our passenger side hose in this push to connect connector but this was added during testing this is a purge button so when you're done airing up because the lines still have compressed air in them once you detach them from all your tires the whole air system is still under pressure under pressure so, so these push to connect connectors don't want to release when it's under pressure so we have a little purge button that lets out any remaining pressure in the airlines and then these are nice and easy to use and you don't break them and damage them over time that's a great idea having the purge button there for sure and then you've got your other side airline so we've got two two airlines with t connectors in them one for passenger one from the the driver's side, they're both the same length. And if you're wondering about Wrangler versus Gladiator in length, the kit is all the same for both Jeeps. Even though the Gladiator's a little bit longer, there's enough hose that you can reach the, the rear wheels on your Gladiator and not have it dragging in the ground 
with your Wrangler when you're using it. So if you guys look, I mean, I've been using the Kraken for over a year since before it came out because we had a pre-production model. And if you're wondering how clean the system is, stays, even though I use this all the time, I've been using it for a year, I haven't replaced, and this probably, this is, we're gonna answer the first question, Fluff. The question about durability of these push to connect connectors. I haven't replaced any of these. We've been running this an entire year. Look how clean the hoses still are. And I am not gentle with my gear, but because of the way this works, it's nice and easy. You can just pull it out, plug it in. You don't have to drag anything on the ground if you don't want, if you're careful. And when the system is uh, connected to your tires, none of these drag on the ground. And the airline that they use curls up just super simple. You're not messing around with uh, one of those slinky hoses, you know, like they're just getting tangled all the time. These untangle really easily. Awesome. And look how clean that is. Awesome. I mean, we've been everywhere with this and we have not damaged anything and kept it looking basically new. A lot of time and thought went into this system, which is, you know, it's a bit of a premium. So I think we can kind of get to the, the, another question. And a lot of people ask is like, why this system over? There's another system from another company. I think, I don't know if we should say them specifically. And in their system, the, you know, they, char they charge less for it. But I went and had a look at it. I'll show you guys here. Let's pull it up. Some of the big differences with this solution that I noticed. Uh, so we've got a mounting plate, which is like we have with the Kraken. We have a T connector that goes over to your passenger side, like the Kraken. But one thing I noticed here with the air hoses is they're using these these chucks here, which are like the clip on. I don't know if you ever tried to use these. I always have problems with them. Yeah. And I don't know where I've had never seen these air chucks before this system, but these you basically just walk up and push them on and then they lock in place. And I've never had a problem with these connectors uh, leaking or not holding while the system is airing up. It's uh, it's awesome. Um, and then the other thing, the big difference with this other system is there's no real wiring for the kit. So yeah, you can wire your ARB compressor in, but as we're gonna see here in a minute when we unpack this, it's like a giant rat's nest of wires because they include everything. They've got all the plugs for whatever kind of installation you might need, where Epic has boiled this all down to basically this, and we reuse a little bit of the wiring in here. So this system here costs $249.95 US and the Kraken is 300 US, it's 409 Canadian mm -hmm. plus some shipping. So for an extra 50 bucks, you don't have to mess around with wiring and you get really nice air chuck connectors, but you know, I'll let you guys decide what you want to pick. Now I see they do have a, they have an air gauge on here. And we have tried using air gauge. I don't know how this system works with an air gauge, but the problem that we have with an air gauge is when the compressor is running, the air gauge isn't accurate because it's now line pressure and not tire pressure. So it's kind of bouncing all over the place. What Epic recommends we use for checking and monitoring your tires is your built-in tire pressure monitoring system. And you can watch that while it's exactly doing it. So you, you, can, you can sit in your Jeep out of the weather, watch your tire pressure monitor system go up. Now I have had, and I will full disclaimer, full disclosure, I have had some issues with my tire pressure monitoring system and how often it updates. I know there's a lot of questions about what if it doesn't update, does it update when the Jeep's not moving, all that kind of stuff. And that really is gonna depend on your tire pressure sensors. So I have aftermarket ones in here because I was not smart and I sold my original wheels and tires with the Mopar ones. And these aftermarket ones, I can't remember what company they're from, but they don't update properly when the vehicle isn't moving and it's airing up. They update really quickly when the air goes down. What I do, I have a gauge and I just pop off one of these connectors really quick. I check one tire and see where it's at and put it back on. And the, because all four tires are connected to each other, they equalize the air pressure when, when it's filling up. So whatever one tire is at, all f other three tires. And that hasn't really been a problem for me, but that's sort of my workaround for being dumb and selling my <laughs> low part. Yeah. There we go. We've got the whole system laid out here. And what else? Is that everything in the box? I think that's it. Perfect. Just so we're clear, guys, this compressor is not included in the kit. You need to buy a compressor in addition to the kit because these are like 
what, 1200 bucks or something? Yes. yes. So you need to buy this. This is not, this is not $300. This is $300. This you have, you have to buy as well. But I mean, no matter what kit you're buying or whether you're putting something together yourself, you still need the compressor. The only thing Epic does not include in here are installation instructions. Um, but there is an installation video on their website. My preference is companies include installation materials with their products because then I don't have to be looking at my phone the whole time and I can have a paper install manual that I can carry with me around. But you've got the rest of the bits we'll need here. Yeah, the big max, max I think it's called maxi fuses or something like that. So we're gonna reuse some of this. This will uh, go into the engine bay. Like, look at all the wiring that comes with this. Yeah, I and like if, the idea of uh, this it, stuff being nice and tidy. You know, we don't get this nice little thing under your seat. You end up having to hide and bury, and there's leads on here we don't need because right. this is set up for, like, you know, if you need to use lockers, you can connect in here. It's, like, it's all kinds of stuff. So we're going to use part of this because we need these big fuses and all this thick wire fuse. This is the switch that comes... Oops, I'll fall out. The switch that comes with it, which we're going to reuse the switch, so you don't why buy another switch, you got one in here. But we're going to put the awesome little Kraken awesome. switch on there. So there we go. It's nice we got this nice sun today. Question, two pieces of aluminum for $300? Well, as we can see, this is more than two pieces of aluminum for $300, right? We've got, well, we've got this mounting plate, we've got the inflation system for the other side we've got the nice bag we've got the airlines you've got the extension hose but that's an extra cost we've got all the wiring harness to clean all this up so it's super tidy underneath and then we've got the air hose to connect to the other side and the crack and switch that comes with it and it's all that kind of stuff so it's it's more than just two pieces of aluminum but i think you know where the, what's really nice is we've got this nice mounting spot here for the switch nice and clean purge button all that stuff so there's more in this kit than just a mounting plate for anybody that's really really wondering so before we get started let's answer a couple of these other questions does it work on a jk so like the jk we have in the garage uh no it does not this system right now as of today is built for the jl and the jt so your new jeep this is what they're built for epic as a company generally works on gladiators and jl wranglers and that's the uh, focus for the kraken and maybe some other stuff down the road but as of right now We've got these two models of Jeeps. Oh, this was actually a good question. Maybe we'll cover this while we're installing it. So Fluff, Fluff and I were just talking about the uh, the people that say, oh, well, for 300 bucks, I can put this together myself. You might be able to, I don't know. But uh, here's some things that I pose as a challenge. First of all, you've got to build an aluminum plate that fits exactly under the seat. So that takes a bunch of time. Um, you've got all these connectors here. So you've got to go and source and figure out what connectors to, you know, Landon and the team at Epic spent a ton of time figuring out exactly what connectors to use, what button to use for purge. Yeah, you might not need all the fancy labels and all that. You've got to source all of these connectors. You're going to be paying full retail because you're not buying them in bulk. I didn't even know these existed. So if I was putting together one of these systems, I would have not included these air chuck connectors because I've never heard of them before. But we've also got all these um, push to connect connector. So if you do ever do damage one of your hoses, you can just get some more of this hose and replace it. You know, if you run it over, maybe yeah, you forget yeah. you're airing up and you drive away and you just pop that back on and it's sealed again. Yeah, it's and there was a lot of questions about like the durability of all this stuff. I haven't had any of this leak in a year of using it. I'm sure somebody can piece together something similar, but that's a lot of time guys. And honestly for 300 bucks, I'd rather just order up a kit, have it all ready to go, and spend my time installing it Agreed. and out off-roading than hours and hours of figuring out what kind of parts are. Now, there's probably some of you guys are going to comment, well, I know exactly what all those parts are, and I would just go on blah, whatever website and order them all up. That's great, but that's a very, very small percentage of you guys, I think, that know that all of these parts exist, exactly what to order. Let's install it. You had a question? Let's Comment? I was just Sarcastic say, remark? You know, I think I think one of the things too that's great with this is you're supporting local business. I know our American friends love made in the United States, but I mean made in Canada is pretty good too, right? Epic puts all this together, boxes it up, and 
sends it to you from their shop in right. Vancouver. Yeah. And not the compressor. And to your point, it is supporting a small business. And here's here's the thing. There are some companies out there that support the off-road community, developing new products, support creators like myself and Sean from The Story Till Now and Teddy from uh, Unwinding Roads and supporting people making the content for you guys watching these videos, right? Like I could not do a lot of what I do without the great support from companies like Epic Adventure Outfitters who helped me with so much with the Jeep, who helped me with products with this, answer a lot of questions. And there's several other companies that allow me to make videos and, and provide you guys with this awesome content. And I think that we should be supporting the companies that support our hobbies. 100%. Yeah. Okay, to start this install, we need to bolt the Airb compressor to the base plate with 10 mil bolts. Crap. Why is it the 10 mil always goes missing? Oh, we have a wrench. I'm gonna go make some coffee. This is the only 10 mil wrench I have. All right. Please don't lose it. <laughs> so the first step that we need to complete here is uh, bolting the base plate on to the compressor itself with the included bolts and lock washers and big fender washers here. Are you trying to figure out the orientation? Yes, I am. So Epic has this crazy PDF. I know they didn't include it with us, with the kit, but it's all chaptered, it's all color, and it's very, very detailed because I know how much Epic absolutely hates bad instructions. And so they know what to put in their instructions. Toward, yep, you've got the direction right. That one. All right. That one and that one. Easy peasy. And then our next step is going to be putting on the T connector. I will go make some coffees All and right. we will do that. Well, here you go. Here's the coffee. Thanks, sir. Install the supplied T fitting into the ARB compressor manifold using a 15 mil open end wrench. Tighten until it won't turn anymore. Use your best judgment here. I'm not a very good at judge. Looks like they put some thread lock yep. on there. No air leaks. I haven't had any air leaks with my Kraken at all. The T fitting installed, update, uh, rotate the upper plastic portion of the fitting to reveal the metal. Oh, I see what they're saying. Okay. So what we don't want is this sticking straight up because we have in the compressor, we can actually slide this down. Maybe from this side. Wonder if we take the cover off. But it seems like it would be a lot easier to adjust without the cover. <laughs> <laughs> nice thing about the gladiators, we got the tailgate, we can just put stuff down. So we've got a nut there, we've got one here. If I had a 10 mil socket, this would probably be a lot easier. Oh, I feel like we should have done this before we put the teeth fitting on. Manifold orientation bolt is really hard to get to, <laughs> unless you have a thin wrench. And the only other way is to pull the shroud up. But we want to do that before we put the teeth fitting in. Whoa, there you, there go. you go. So we just got to loosen this bolt up. Maybe like right there. Yeah, that's... That's probably so we'll good. run the T like T fitting bolts. Which one do you want to do first? Bolts. Let's do the bolts. This is basically like working at Epic. I just hang out, put a camera on my head, <laughs> let them work. I'll, I'll tighten the bolts. <laughs> you do the bolt tightening. How would you rank your uh, mechanical abilities on a scale of one to 10? So people get an idea of how, because I work on Jeeps a lot, but I'm not Epic level work on Jeeps. Where do you sit in the spectrum? I'd say a solid three and a half. Three and a half, so that's pretty good. You can turn some wrenches, but you know, maybe not fabricate and figure doing a lift kit install and all that kind of fancy stuff. Three and a half case. Three, three. So we're gonna get you up to a four today. If you could finish this, someone with what they rate themselves as a four out of 10 on Jeep wrenching ability can do this install. I mean, this install is pretty straightforward. It gives the viewers a little bit of perspective of how hard this actually is. Ginger, he's probably like at least 11. Put the T connector back on, All right. 15 mil wrench, snug it up. We probably screwed up that Teflon tape and the ginger will yell at me when he sees this video, but that's how we roll. Let me see where we're at with questions. Uh, here's one. Would it be better to have the switch on the driver's side so you can watch the dash and turn it off? I think, and I don't know how complicated that would be for wiring, but I do think that having the switch on the driver's side, if you're watching and airing up, on your screen using your TPMS sensors would be handy to relocate the switch to this bracket. I do agree. I think that is something that I think would be better. Um, however, I don't know what logistically is required to then get, because now you got to run wires, not just this airline, but you got to run wires to the other side. 
well, you wouldn't have a switch on the passenger side. We don't want to mount this on the driver's side because that means running much larger, bigger wires over to the driver's side from the battery. So we want to keep this on the passenger side to keep these wires as short as possible to the battery. But I suppose you could put a switch on the other side or maybe like a three-way switch. So it doesn't matter which side you're on. Interesting feedback. I don't know how complicated that would be to uh, actually install into the system. We'll get to some of these other questions as we go, but what about, since we just put the ARB compressor on, what about the single compressor? Because this is the dual compressor. The single compressor isn't made for this kit. I don't know, maybe you could drill some holes and maybe get it mounted on the plate. Maybe you could figure out how the harness works with it. It's not built for the single compressor, it's built for the dual compressor. I don't know what the price difference is between the single compressor and the dual compressor, but I do know that this takes long enough for me to air up my tires. I wouldn't want to make it take any longer by having the, the single ARB compressor. So I figure if you're getting into, you know, buying the mounts, buying the compressor, all that stuff, doing the install, just buy the dual compressor. If you're running, you know, even 35 inch tires, but 37s, uh, we're going to be running 40s on the Demonator when we go pick it up. I want to air up as fast as possible. And this does air up all four tires, I think in around 10 minutes or so, depending on how low you've gone and what street pressure you want to run at. I wouldn't want to put a single compressor in there. That would really slow things down. These ARB dual compressors are awesome. And will it work with a CO2 tank? Nope, absolutely not. I can't think of you, how you could possibly use this with a CO2 tank. I would just go buy a, another solution that is just air hoses, connect it to your CO2 tank and um, connect all four tires at once. This is not the kit for you. I'm not even gonna pretend that it would be. You could probably piece together something with just hoses and some manifolds. I would highly recommend getting these air chucks because they're awesome and connect that directly to your CO2 tank. Don't even bother looking at the Epic Kraken inflation system. Uh, it's not for you. And we'll get to some of the other questions about plugging drain, the drain hole because we're gonna have to go through that with the wiring. My experience using the hoses in extreme cold weather and how have the push to connect fittings held up over time. We'll cover some of that, but let's carry on to the next step. Uh, locate the rocker, the power rocker switch supplied with your A or B twin compressor. Grab your switch removal tool out of our bag, a little plastic tool, and grab your A or B switch out of the A or B bag. To use the tool, simply insert the thin end in between the switch cover and switch body. Then push towards the center of the switch and the cover should pop off. Oops. Done. See the clips, the clips push out as we push down on it. There we go. Glad they include that tool because that would be a real nightmare to get off otherwise. Find the plug and play ARB twin compressor power switch wiring harness supplied in the Kraken kit. So purple is going to go in the top left Got and then it. red is going to go right next to that. And go. black is going to go right here in the top right corner. Epic tip. Oh, we should have read that. Oh, we did. That was the arrows. Tip should be at the top because <laughs> we don't read <laughs> past where we are. <laughs> Give that a nice little click. Bam find the plug that seems to plug into that just like that magic tools magic tools <laughs> don't lose this it's the only one i have no right. just kidding unlike 10 mils we have to pull this part uh, because we can't fit this clip through all the things we need to do with it pop this out like that it's just a soft rubber clip really easy to get off do you want to do this part yeah sure so pin the bottom there? I think that's the release and then you should be able to gently see what the ginger says. Now in the instructions it'll show you what color wires went where so you can keep track. No need for a special pin tool. End of the ARB compressor power harness. It is time to install the supplied ring terminals using wire strippers or a sharp knife. Grab some electricity. 1500 watts. Yeah. We need lots of power to power this. We're going to be reviewing some of EcoFlow's new products coming out here very soon. We've got the river two pro coming out we're gonna have the delta two pro coming out as well as their new let me show you guys so here's something i'm super excited to show you guys and make sure you subscribe this is the wave this is their portable air conditioner system which has power built into it they've got a wave two coming out which is completely different from this it has heat pumps in it and it actually puts out heat and 
air conditioning. This is going to be coming out in a few weeks. The Wave 2, it's on its way. We're going to be testing it out. It's not like a heater that has an element and a fan. It's heat pumps, which are very efficient on electricity. It's supposed to run like eight hours, something like that. We'll do some testing, try it all out. If you guys want to see that, this is going to be a totally different way to heat your rooftop tents or your camper or whatever. Check that out. Anyways, back to what we're doing. Look at that. Whenever you gotta heat some heat shrink. We have heat. <laughs> anywhere you need to go. <laughs> okay, are these all on crimped? They are. I'd say that is shrink. Step, what chapter are we on? We're on chapter uh, five. So chapter six in this 18 part story. Now we have to remove the front seat. Oh, they're Torx. Oh, they're not Torx bits. They're Torx. Oh, wow. Okay, wait, hang on. What is that? That's not what we have. <laughs> oh, we got the uh, we got the other end of that. Yeah, we need the female end. We need a Torx socket on. To oh, it's you know what? It changes by year. Look at that. So on 2020, 2018 to 2020 models, it uses a Torx bit. Cause look at this. That would work on mine. So this is actually a Torx bit here, but on yours, you have an E12 an external Torx socket on 2021 models. Do I have this? Here's to hoping. I'm gonna talk real quick about getting water in your Jeep and affecting this compressor. I'm gonna say that my personal experience is I have never had water come in under the doors and into that area where we're mounting the compressor. Um, I would have to be in some extremely deep water and I've also been out with Sean from the story so now who has gone through Extremely deep water and because of the door seals You can be for fording through water this deep But if you're getting much deeper than that, you probably got other things to be worried about and I've never had my back seat flood with water. I'm not concerned about it, but if you like to uh, cross deep rivers all the time and you do find a ton of water in your Jeep this might not be the mounting location for you, but for the rest of us, it's still a good location. The socket I had, guys, was not the right one. This is actually called an E12 socket. We had to go and buy these Torx bits, external, extruded. I don't know what the E stands for, but basically it's a reverse Torx bit, female side, to get these little bolts out of a newer model Jeep's front seat bracket. So, so these are an E12, not this weird socket. You can't use a 16 point. Here, I'll tilt it up and you stick your head under there. The uh, there's right. two connectors under there. Okay, so we've got to pull that trim tool out. Oh, these two right here. Okay, I see what's going on. So we got to pull this connector out and this connector out and we got to get a trim tool. Okay. Okay, well, Fluff is finishing getting that disconnected under the seat. I'm just going to pull these fuses out. This is important. We don't want to wire all this with the fuses in. Got these big 40 amp fuses. Okay, that'll keep our carpet out of the way because we're going to take this grommet out, which you're not using because you don't even have the carpet punched out. And we're going to put a hole in this grommet to run our harness through. Right. You see that slot right there? There's a hole right yeah, here. Yeah. So you guys can see it. There's a slot right there between the fender and the battery and the gas models, a little different on the diesel models. So feed that harness all the way down in there, just leaving the positive and negative up here for now, and then I'll help you right. connect it up. Yeah, this is where you got to get under your Jeep. slide down underneath and find this wire coming down of course. and we've got a factory harness here okay so i have to come along the frame hang on i gotta get that far i'm not that far yet all right there we go okay so you can see this plastic harness here we're just gonna zip tie this to the harness and then it routes up there. And I'll show you from the top, we're basically gonna come in the drain plug through that hole we just cut in the grommet and then we can finish off the interior side of this install. So coming through the drain plug hole, which we don't really need because we don't even have that punch through in the carpet. Punch that through. 
Now we're gonna just pop this drain plug back in. And that is a pretty tight seal. As good as how we started. Okay, there we go. Harness in the Jeep. Now we gotta get the Kraken in. Pull this up here. Pull this up here, under there. Just sit there like that. And then we're gonna drop our compressor and mounting plate and all that fun stuff in. And then we can plug it in and then we will connect it up to the battery, put the fuses in. Okay, we need this 60 inch crossover piece of black tubing. This is our hose that's going to send air over to the driver's side connector. I think there's, you reach your hand under the seat and you should feel it coming out. Okay, let's yeah, that's pretty much what we want. Right there under the seat, not affected by the rails and just hanging out the side. And this is gonna go under the seat. Plug in this big monster here. There we go. Okay, so you can see why this little harness is handy because then we don't have all that other junk that comes with the harness attached to it. So we're gonna plug this into the T so that it feeds our driver's side like that. So now we need to tilt our seat forward. And what we need to do is, because we're sharing the bolt holes with the seat, we're gonna slide the Kraken back a little bit. Right there, okay, back a little bit, there we go. And now we are gonna use the seat bolts to resecure the seat through the Kraken plate. Let's see, what other questions haven't we answered yet? Uh, does the compressor get hot? Yeah, they kind of do get hot, so you wanna make sure you leave this area open. You don't want to put a bunch of stuff up against it because this sucks in a ton of air, but it doesn't get so hot that it does any damage to anything. I haven't noticed any burning smells or any anything running my crack in under my seat, filling up my vehicle and usually Chef John's rig. Two sets of tires or more, never had a problem. What about inflating two tires? I will answer that in a minute. Uh, once we get all this up and running, I'll show you what we do. And isn't that noisy for your passenger? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it kind of is. If somebody's sitting there while you're airing up, it's a little bit noisy, but it's not the end of the world, honestly. Some other things, so it needs a deflate option. Um, I don't know, guys, I think that pulling all of the hoses out and connecting, to the, connecting them to your tires to deflate seems a lot uh, less efficient and not as easy as doing uh, using other things for deflating, whether it's like the little, what are they, trail gear, trail head deflators you can put on or preset to a to a specific PSI. I don't know, maybe it would be nice for some of you guys, but system is an inflation system, not a deflation system. It needs a gauge. So I think we kind of talked about that before. So you guys are asking about how are the, how flexible are these airlines in extreme weather and how durable are the push to connect fittings? How are they holding up? So these are my hoses after here. Honestly, guys, the hoses I think get better over time. When they come right out of the box, they're a little bit rigid, a little bit stiff and uh, they're a lot easier to uncoil after you've used them for a while and they lose uh, a little bit of their, they get a little softer. And it's not uh, super warm out, it's about two or three degrees Celsius right now. And I've used these in the snow to air up, never had a problem. Uh, they don't get brittle, they don't get really hard and frozen. And then I just slide mine quickly into our awesome bag that Epic provides. And I find they fit fairly well right under the seat, just like that. I haven't had any problems with any of the T connectors, the push connect, push to connect fittings on either end or the air chucks, they've all been great. If you ever have a problem with the hose, super easy, you don't have to do much. You could just disconnect it and replace that chunk of hose. Same with all of these push to connect fittings. If you ever run one over, step one on one or break it, you just replace that single fitting. Any of these air chucks, they're all really quick and easy to replace. Or if you need to extend it or you wanna change the colors, get some different airline, make it your own, go ahead. But let's finish this off, Fluff. So this is just gonna get held in place by this one bolt. Go ahead and push that up a little bit. And then we'll grab our airline. Make sure it's not hooked on the air vent here. And we'll just pop this into the back. And we can put our bolt right back in. And then what is this extra wire on here for? 
Oh, sh this was, I think, supposed to go in the crimp. Whoops. So this was supposed to go in our crimp. Oh yeah, right here, one. So it should be, we should add it to the picture. They should have this in the picture. <laughs> okay, we will solve this small mistake with another ring terminal. And so we will butterfly these. So they sit a little nicer. Put those on there like that. Wedge our gargantuan fuel. Oh, oh. Is it on? It's on. <laughs> That'll do it. It's like, that shouldn't be doing that. Make sure your Kraken is off. <laughs> and now the moment of truth. Kraken works. Oh yeah, right there. Make sure the Kraken is uh, set to off. Let's show everybody and show you how to use this. So you'll take these out of the bag, walk around, plug one in. So plug that into your fitting under your seat. Yep, just pop her in there. It'll click, that's it. You don't have to push it hard. It's a very light touch. That's it, just leave those. You don't wanna hook them up to the tires till both sides are connected. Otherwise you'll be bleeding air out. Plug that into this side, push the black collar in, pop that in there, and then see how easy these chucks are. You just, so push it on and then push the collar on. So you just push and then push that collar down all the awesome. way, so it'll click into place. Yeah. Perfect. And see, you never have leaks, right? Same with this side. Boom. Oh, of course, we've got a... <laughs> that one wasn't on tight. There we go. Oh, that's excellent. One of the questions like, what do you do when it's raining? Well, you can close your door to the first click without squishing the airlines if you really want. I asked you that question. Yeah, don't do double click, just single click, but you see it didn't damage the hose. Remember guys, you can always replace these hoses if you really need to. The last two questions I wanted to cover off with you guys are one, can we use air tools? No, not really. My experience is the ARB twin compressor, it has pretty good CFM, but it won't run air tools. I think if you're gonna run air tools, you need something with a lot higher CFM or a big tank. And the question that you guys had as well about, okay, I've done airing up, but I want my rear tires maybe a little bit higher. All you do, really simple, while the Kraken is running, we'll leave it off so it's not too noisy, is you just come along, unhook your front chucks, let the rear fill up to the PSI you want, and then turn off the Kraken. As long as you have your push to connect fittings in each of the manifolds, these air chucks will seal when you disconnect them from your uh, tire. So if we turn this on, there's no, no air coming out here right now, but it, there you go, you kind of hear it filling the rear tire. So the other thing too, which is if you need to uh, air up your buddy's rig or something like that, just leave your air hoses connected to the other side or leave the little red stopper in, disconnect, have them pull up beside you, and you can air up two of the tires of the rig next to you. Yeah, you can't do all four at once, but they should probably go buy a Kraken. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Fluff, what do you think? How do you rate the install on a scale of one to 10 difficulty? I would say even a guy with my four and a half could probably get it done. <laughs> there you go. Well, we started at three and a half, so you're four and a half <laughs> yeah. now. Very straightforward install. Um, so let me know, you guys, if you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments below. I'll leave a link in the description to the Kraken uh, tire inflation system if you want to pick one up from yourself for yourself at uh, epic's website and uh, Hit subscribe if you enjoyed this video guys because I upload a new video every week Leave a like and I'll see you guys next week okay.